Lesson 5.2, Properties of Rational Exponents and Radicals. Our essential question today, how do you use properties of exponents? Standard 5.2, number four, writing a radical expression in simplest form. So we need to rationalize our denominator. And how do we rationalize the denominator? We're going to multiply it by a fraction. Then that fraction needs to equal one. But this is a special fraction in that the denominator, when we distribute everything, the square root's gonna go away. That's the whole point of rationalizing the denominator. So why are we trying to rationalize the denominator? You are not allowed to have a radical sign in the denominator. To get rid of the radical sign, it's called rationalizing the denominator. Now this is a five plus square root of three. Think of this kind of like one of the perfect squares. If this was the plus version, we needed to multiply it by the minus version because these are the difference of perfect squares. When we multiply these together, you'll notice that the square root ends up not being there anymore. Well, if this is the denominator, the numerator has to be the same exact thing because this fraction, same thing over same thing, is actually one. So we are, in a sense, only multiplying this fraction by one. These two are called conjugates of each other. This is the added version of this problem. This is the subtracted version of this problem. These are conjugates. We found this because we had to have the conjugate of the already in their denominator. So now we have two fractions. Remember that you multiply fractions straight across. So we're gonna multiply our fractions straight across and we have one being multiplied by the five minus the root three. And our denominator has two polynomials. It has five plus the root three being multiplied by five minus the root three. So one times this entire parenthesis is going to just give me the parenthesis. So I have five minus the square root of three all over. I have a binomial multiplied by a binomial. So I'm gonna actually use the area model to make this one a little easier. When we have square roots involved, kids often lose things. So five plus the square root of three and five minus the square root of three. So here is my multiplied binomial. Five times five is 25. Five times the negative root three is a negative five root three. Five times a root three is a five root three. Root three times a negative root three. I'm gonna write it as root three times a negative root three. Positive times a negative is a negative. Root three times root three is a root nine, but what is root nine? Square root of nine is three. So this actually ends up being a negative three in the end. So notice we have 25 minus a five root three plus a five root three minus a three in my denominator. We need to combine like terms. Remember root threes can only go with root three. So these two right here is what needs to be combined. So I have five minus a root three in the, in the numerator. We have 25. A negative five root threes plus five of these root threes gives me zero. And so we have 25 minus three. So I have five minus the square root of three all over. 25 minus three is 22. And this is my final answer. How do I know it's my final answer? There is no more radical sign down here in the denominator. It's all up in the numerator. Let's go ahead and apply that to this problem right here. I need to simplify this problem. I need to rationalize the denominator because there's a square root. So I know that means that I am multiplying by a fraction. What is the fraction going to be? Remember, these are going to be conjugates of each other. Kind of think of it as like the perfect squares. If he was the minus version of the perfect square, we need the plus version of the perfect square. If that's the denominator, the numerator had to be the same exact thing so that fraction in itself is actually one. So we multiply fractions straight across. So I have three being multiplied to this parenthesis. And I have a binomial being multiplied by a, another binomial. So the three gets multiplied to the entire parenthesis. So three times six, I have 18. Three times a root two is a three root two. Doing my denominator, I need to use the area model so I don't lose track of my square root. So six minus the square root of two and six plus the square root of two. Six times six is 36. Six times a negative square root two is a negative six square root of two. 
6 times a square root of 2 is 6 square root of 2. Negative times a positive is a negative. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. I observe that combining like terms, this is a negative 6 root 2's and this is a positive 6 root 2's. Negative 6 root 2's combined with the positive 6 root 2's, these actually zero out. So what do I have left in my denominator? I have 36 minus 2. And what is 36 minus 2? 36 minus 2 is 34. And I know I'm done because I rationalized the denominator and there is no square root left in the denominator. The last one that we're going to do together, and then this one's going to be for you for independent practice. I need to rationalize the denominator, which means the square root can't be here anymore. So I need to multiply it by a fraction that is the same as 1. This square root down here is the minus version. I'm going to multiply by the plus version of it. Kind of think of them as perfect squares. So plus version, minus version, they're like perfect squares. If this is the denominator, then that is what the numerator needs to be so that these equal one. Now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to multiply straight across. So I have one being multiplied by my numerator and I have polynomial one being multiplied by polynomial two. One times anything is that anything. So my numerator is just eight plus two square root of five. For my denominator, I am going to need to use my area model so this is 8 minus the 2 root 5, and this is 8 plus the 2 root 5. 8 times 8 is 64. Negative 2 root 5 times 8 is a negative 16 root 5. 8 times 2 root 5 is 16 root 5. 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4. Root 5 times root 5 is root 5. So this is negative 4 times 5, which ends up giving me a negative 20. I observe 16 root 5's and minus 16 root 5's zero each other out. So I end up having 64 minus 20 as my denominator. So I have 8 plus 2 root 5 all over 44. Now looking at this, we're not allowed to go inside the radical sign if we're simplifying. But I observe that all of these outside numbers can be divided by 2. So I am actually going to go through and divide all of those numbers by 2. So my fraction's in simplest form. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. Positive 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is a 1 root 5. 44 divided by 2 is 22. I finally have my final answer in simplest form, and there is no radical in the denominator. So I am done. This last problem is for you for independent practice, so please do that problem.